You're listening to The Corbett Report. CorbettReport.com Let's move on to the next question. Uh, This time, an audio question in from Lee. Hello, James. I watched your recent Boiling Frogs post video regarding paedophilia, and at the very end, Sibel brought up the point about public apathy. And whilst I completely understand her frustration at it, I also understand that we are being polluted daily from all kinds of different angles, you know, the aspartame, fluoride, the GMOs, the vaccines, all of the toxins that are added and you know, known or unknown to our food. So the question I ask is, to what extent do you think that the apathy is pure apathy? And to what extent do you think that the apathy is affected or fostered or created by the poisons that we are exposed to daily? Thank you very much. That's an interesting question, Lee. Thank you for posing it. And for people who have just stumbled on this video by accident, thinking uh, this was Colbert or something of that sort, yes, this sounds like crazy science fiction fantasy, but it really isn't. Uh, And there are a lot of different things that we've gestured to in the past in regards to the actual science and technology that has been experimented with and played around with with regards to potential for well, mind control of some sort or another uh, via outside environmental influences. Dr. Persinger's tests suggest that carefully programmed electromagnetic frequencies can tap into individual brains and influence people's emotions. The cognitive processes of the human brain are really quite simple. And if you understand how they work, you can make entire populations think and decide uh, the manner in which you wish. Harvard researchers have found children who live in high fluoride areas have significantly lower IQs than those who live in low fluoride areas. Fluoride is added to drinking water, baby formula, and toothpaste to prevent tooth decay. Further, the EPA says fluoride is a chemical with substantial evidence of developmentally neurotoxicity, meaning it interferes with functions of the brain. Some doctors even say the positive effects it has on tooth decay isn't really worth what it's doing to our children's brains. Lithium is a medication that in prescription doses treats mood disorders in people with bipolar disorder or manic depressive illness. And what these researchers found in Japan is that it's, uh, lithium is present in trace amounts in the normal water supply in some communities. And in those communities, they have a lower suicide rate. And so they're really investigating whether trace amounts of lithium can just change the mood in a community enough to really, in a, in a positive way, without having the bad effects of lithium, to really affect the mood and decrease the suicide rate. Now, unfortunately, I think you can appreciate that there's no way that I can possibly provide any kind of definitive answer to that question. I don't have the secret smoking gun documents proving exactly what is being done in what measure by what people to what degree and to what extent that's having an effect on what people in what situations. It's so much speculation combined with, uh, I'm sure, a lot of misinformation and disinformation out there on the interwebs that I'll let you sort through that tangled mess yourself, but it's an intriguing other aspect to this question, this problem of public apathy, that of course we did raise recently in our roundtable on the Hastert scandal, the subject of pedophilia in politics, and why so few people seem to care about this, uh, this issue or take it seriously.